Thank you so much for joining me today at Everyday Yoga. My name is Christine. My pronouns are she and her. And today's uh, restorative yoga class will be all around finding balance in the body and finding balance in the breath. Um, we'll also do a little meditative practice at the end of our class to help support deep, healthy, restful sleep. So let's go ahead just by coming into the present moment by inviting yourself to notice your breath. Take an inhale and really feel where you feel that in your body. Chances are, if you're feeling a little bit antsy, maybe wired or keyed up, you might be noticing the breath up higher in your chest. And just notice the sensation of that where you feel your body expanding as you inhale. And then maybe gradually invite the breath down deeper into your belly giving a signal to your nervous system that it's safe to relax so that we can find balance in the body, but also a little more mobility because when our muscles are not tight, we can find a little bit range, a little more range of motion. So let's just begin to calm down the body. And if you feel safe to close your eyes, close your eyes or soften your gaze and continue to invite the breath down deep into the body. And if you're familiar with Ujjayi breath, that yogic um, constriction at the back of the throat, Let's practice that now. If you're not familiar, it's kind of like um, you're making an ocean sound at the back of the throat, a little constriction, or maybe you're imitating Darth Vader and his heavy breathing. I feel like it's more like when your kid is asking you for something and you pretend like you're sleeping, so you're kind of like... <sighs> like that, but you're not doing the whole snoring thing. It's just the little constriction down there in the back of the throat, down at the base. So just a gentle, and you can hear the whisper of the breath as it draws in. And as it flows back out. And doing this here anchors the attention of your mind so that you can bring more energy to the breath, less energy to any thoughts that are floating around. And it also slows down the breath because it lessens how much we can bring in and how much we can let go so that even further, we're slowing and deepening the breath. So let's just play with that for a few more rounds, practicing that ujjayi breath. And as you practice that here, you might begin to notice the spine, how it's positioned. And it might feel nice to draw a little more length up the spine, gently drawing the base of the skull upward. And letting the shoulders relax away from the ears. You might also notice the support of whatever you're sitting on today. strong and tall and anchored to your breath, giving it your full attention. Where attention goes, energy flows.
If you've been sitting with the legs crossed here, let's just go ahead and rock back, switch the cross of your legs, and then find that tall spine once again. I'm sitting on a nice thick blanket so that my knees have room down underneath my hips to give my hips a little more space. But the next time you inhale, maybe keeping that ujjayi breath will raise the arms up towards the sky. And let's just exhale and find a soft, gentle twist to the right. We're not looking for depth here. We're just looking for gentle movement to warm up the spine. Inhale the arms back to center. Exhale, float the arms down as you twist gently to the left. Let's inhale the arms up to center. This time let's exhale, bring the right fingertips down to the right. Reach the left fingertips up and over, keeping anchored through the left sit bone. Next inhale brings you back to center, and then those left fingertips on your exhale will come down to the earth. Get long through the right side body. And then we'll inhale the arms up high to the sky. Exhale, bring your hands down to your knees. Let's inhale and find a gentle cow back. Lift the heart, maybe lift the gaze, open up across the throat. Exhale, round the spine, chin to chest, belly button coming inward. Inhale, lift the heart, find your cow posture. Exhale, round back, chin to chest, find your cat. Let's find three more rounds of cat-cow. Move as slowly as feels good in your body, anchoring yourself with your breath, continuing that ujjayi breath as it serves you. Let's inhale, find your cow heart. This time as you exhale, find your cat back and reach your fingertips forward at shoulder height. Let's inhale, sweep the arms out to the sides, palms facing forward, look up as much as feels good to you. Exhale, round or forward, chin to chest, reach those fingertips forward, give them a little wiggle. Wiggle the fingers as you open up, gentle back bend as much as feels good to you. And as you're here, think about opening up the shoulder blades in your cat posture like elevator doors. And as you inhale up into cow, think about the shoulder blades closing like those elevator doors, drawing them open as you reach forward. Sending them closed as you open up to the sky. Let's find two more rounds just like this. Moving with as generous or as subtle a movement as feels good to you. And then let's inhale, open up the arms. Exhale, release the fingertips down to the earth. And then let's go ahead and come on to our knees. And of course, if you have uh, hard floors, you might wanna pad your knees with a blanket. But we're just gonna come into a high kneeling posture for a moment. Bring those hands to the hips and maybe squeeze your elbows back towards one another. Lift the heart, tuck the chin, draw the tailbone down towards the earth, and you can kind of use your hands to draw the tailbone down to keep your low back safe as you lift your heart. Just kind of a very shallow camel posture. If full camel is in your practice and you're all warmed up and limber right now, feel free to take that. This is a beautiful variation of camel that doesn't put the low back at as much risk. Let's take one more inhale here. 
exhale, come back to vertical and step your right foot forward. Now, if you've got blocks you can use here to bring the earth a little closer, go ahead and do that. Especially if, like I said, you're a little stiff or cold. And we're just going to, actually, I think I'm going to have mine on the highest uh, setting here, right alongside the foot, and just find a little dynamic movement, rocking gently back and forth. Find your Tadasana spine here, chin tucked, shoulder blades relaxed down away from the ears. If you have a little more space or feel like you've created a little, little more, you might tuck the back toes and send the knee back a bit. And then you can keep those toes tucked or bring the top of the foot down to the mat. And we'll just find a couple breaths here. Again, you can draw that tailbone down as you reach the crown up and away. And maybe find the ujjayi breath once again. One more inhale here. And as you exhale, walk the hands back so that the hips come over the back knee. You might keep the sole of the front foot down on the earth and get a nice stretch across the front of the ankle and in the top of the shin. But if it feels nice, you could flip the toes up towards the sky. And if you need to adjust, you might wiggle that foot forward a little bit on the heel. Inhale a nice long spine wherever you are, foot up or down. And as you exhale, we're just going to bow towards that knee. Any amount, just until you feel sensation in the back of the hamstring, maybe in the glute. Your arms can be stretched forward alongside your front foot or you can have them right underneath your shoulders, always being willing to adjust your blocks as that serves your practice. And we're gonna stay here for a few breaths. And as you do, invite the breath deep into the low belly. And you'll notice with the thigh compressed against the low belly, where else does the breath expand? I notice it in my hips and my low back, which I think is just wonderful if you have any kind of issues at the sacrum or have had a sciatica injury. Of course, if you have an acute sciatic injury, you wouldn't want to be here. That would be way too intense, more likely than not. But continue breathing length into your spine. And if you like, you might explore gently rounding the back and letting the crown of the head bow down towards the earth. Notice how your breath as you inhale expands the low back, giving yourself a massage with the breath. Let's take three more breaths wherever you are, lifted or rounded. Finding that ujjayi breath if it feels nice to you and helps to anchor the mind. And as you're ready, the next time you inhale, go ahead and straighten the spine, draw the heart forward, rebend the front knee, and we're going to just step back to find high kneeling once again. Go ahead and bring your hands to your hips, draw the elbows back and down, maybe turn your fingertips down so you can really draw the tailbone down towards the earth. Lift your heart, lift your gaze. Cobble breaths right there, just a little counter posture. 
Next time you inhale, we'll come back to high kneeling and whoop, step that left foot forward, hopefully without toppling over. And maybe find your blocks if you're using them on the same height as you did on the first side. We'll find some gentle movement here before we deepen this posture. One wonderful thing that we're doing here is we are massaging the lymph nodes in the groin. So our circulatory system that pumps blood throughout our body has a pump, the heart. And that keeps that fluid flowing easily throughout our body, bringing nutrients and everything where it needs to go. And from here, you might deepen by stepping that back knee back a bit. We'll find some stillness here. Finding your long spine, your long tailbone, anchoring yourself with your breath, with or without the ujjayi breath. But the thing, getting back to the circulatory system, our, its companion system, the lymphatic system, cleans up all the cellular debris. And the lymph nodes filter that lymphatic fluid. But that system does not have a pump. The only way that fluid can flow throughout our body is by tissue movement. And we have lymph nodes, not just in the places I always thought we had them. I'll be honest, I didn't learn this until very recently. Um, but I always knew you have them in your neck, in your pits, in your groin. But we also have many of them woven throughout our dig digestive system, all throughout our abdomens, ankles, knees, elbows, and other odd little places throughout the body. And we move that fluid with our movement. So opening and closing the pits of the body helps to stimulate those lymph nodes and keep that flowing healthy. And again, you can extend through that front leg, draw the sit bones back towards the heels, keep the sole up or find it down, arms outstretched or under the shoulders. Find the posture that feels the best in your body. Be willing to experiment, be curious, maybe try something new, or maybe stick to your favorite. And then again, find your long spine here as you inhale and find whatever depth serves you as you exhale, breathing down deep into the belly expanding through the low back, through the hips. You might continue to stay right here or deepen with a straight spine, or you could round the back, let the crown of the head dangle towards the earth, letting that 10 or 12 pound head create some traction along the back of the neck and in the spine. Noticing any places of tension or tightness and imagine you have a balloon there and as you inhale, you can expand the balloon. And as you exhale, soften and release. Two more breaths wherever you are. And then let's go ahead and inhale, bend the front knee once again. We'll step back to find our high kneeling. Let's just come into that gentle variation of camel posture, sending this tailbone down as you draw the shoulders back and down, lift the heart, maybe deepen just a little bit, opening up across the chest and the throat. One more inhale right here. And then let's exhale and come all the way down to the belly. If you have a hard floor, you might want to have a blanket alongside your mat. So we're going to come on down to a soft sphinx pose, bringing the elbows over 
or under the shoulders. Press into your palms here with the forearms parallel, or you could bring the hands to prayer hands, Anjali Mudra, or interlace the fingers, tucking that bottom pinky in, whatever feels nice. Let's just stay here for two breaths, saying hello to the front of the body, noticing the contact of your mat underneath you, under your thighs, gently finding firm contact with the tops of the feet and the pubic bone, drawing the heart forward. One more inhale here. And let's exhale, stack your hands, one on top of the other. Bring the forehead down to rest on your hands. From here, and I'm just looking up so you can hear me, we're gonna bend the right knee at a 90 degree angle out from the hip to rest on, your, on the mat or the ground or your blanket, whatever you have here. So we're resting the forehead down and the knee is bent, releasing the low back. You might stay right here or you might wanna turn your gaze to the right. Just make sure if you do that, that when we do the other side, you turn the gaze to the left. And if you wanna deepen any further, you can rest your left temple to your left hand, the back of the left hand, bend the left knee and draw the foot towards the sit bone, gently finding anchor or anchoring yourself by keeping contact with the right hand to the mat. Or you could reach back for that left foot with the right hand and draw the heel in a little bit closer to the glutes. Notice all the opening that's happening along the front of the body. And again, if you're sitting at a desk for much of the day or sitting for much of the day, these areas are bent in the opposite way. And if you think of your blood vessels, your circulatory system, your lymphatic system, your nerves, all of those uh, passageways, pathways, have been crimped up all day, kind of like a hose. And so we're just wanting to uncrimp all of those places and let things come back to flowing once again. So wherever you are, just breathe deep into the belly. Notice the gentle massage you give your internal organs as you inhale. Notice any places you can soften as you exhale. Really tuning in to all the subtle sensations. Did I already say two more breaths? Let's stay here for two more breaths. Soften the jaw. Relax the shoulder. And then gently release the left foot if you have it. Turn your gaze back towards the earth, restacking your palms, resting your forehead. And then we'll just straighten that back knee alongside the left knee. Give your hips a little shimmy shake. And then we'll bend that left knee and come out at a 90 degree angle to the opposite side. Again, you can keep your forehead resting to your stacked hands. You might even notice which hand automatically comes on top and switch it up. Again, strengthening the neuroplasticity in our body. Or you could turn to gaze to the left if you were gazing to the right on the first side. And you could invite yourself to stay here, softening down towards the ground, releasing the the tension in your body, inviting yourself to relax. 
or you might rest your right temple to your right hand, bend the right knee and reach back with your left hand to take a hold of that right foot. And we'll find several breaths here. Again, noticing places that you can soften, noticing places where you can let go a little more, maybe using the ujjayi breath to support and anchor your attention. Let's find three more breaths wherever you are. And then when you're ready, gently release the back foot. Restack your hands, bring the forehead to rest there, straighten the back leg, bring it parallel to the right leg and shimmy shake your hips a little bit from side to side. And then bring your palms alongside your shoulders, press up into tabletop, we're just going to flip right on over down to our backs. Center yourself on your mat. And if you like, you can rock and roll your way down, giving yourself a massage across the spine. Hopefully you're not wearing a jacket with a hood because that gets in the way. And once you've had enough of that, however you get down to the back, we'll bend both knees and draw them in towards the chest. Give yourself a little hug. Rock gently from side to side. Rotate your ankles in one direction and then the other. And then cup your knees over your palms. Inhale, send the knees away, massaging along the sacrum. Exhale, draw the knees in towards the heart. It's just gently straightening and bending the elbows, moving with your breath. And as you're ready, we'll let one foot and then the other come on down to the mat. We'll rest here for just a few more moments. Coming out to final Shavasana, if that feels okay in your body and in your low back. A couple of options if it doesn't is to rest your calves on your two blocks if you're using them so that you've got a gentle bend in the knees or you could bring a rolled up blanket or a bolster underneath those knees. If full Shavasana doesn't work for you, go ahead and come to constructive rest pose with the uh, feet on the mat and the knees coming in together to release the hips. So find a resting posture that feels nurturing for you. Open up your arms, let the palms shine upward. Lengthen the neck by tucking your chin. And if it feels okay, close your eyes. Find three of those ujjayi breaths, really anchoring yourself into the body, into this ple present experience. And release the control of the breath. 
up, take one more really big deep inhale. And when you exhale, let it go with a big sigh and invite your body to fully and completely relax. Soften the eyes, release the jaw, soften the shoulders, the belly, the hips. Relax your two arms and both your legs. And being here with your body and with your breath draws you out of the thinking thing. Um, it's said that we humans think about 60,000 thoughts every single day, and that 80 to 90 percent of them are the same old recycled thoughts that we think all the time. And so if you find your mind busy, you might begin to just notice the thoughts and see which ones continue to come up. Maybe see if they're a thought that no longer serves you that you might begin to let go of. Either that, or you might simply notice the thought and then not attach anything to them and just watch them float by. Imagining your thoughts are like clouds in the sky, and every time you see one, it just floats away. And the way it floats away is to anchor yourself back to attention on your body and your breath. Notice now the support of your mat underneath you. Notice your fingers and your toes. Without changing anything, notice your breath. Notice any places that are tight or tense. And invite them to relax again. We need to invite ourselves to relax over and over again. Because tight and tense is usually our, our normal state of being and we don't even notice it until we try to relax. But here we can bring the energies of the body back into balance. Kind of like Goldilocks, not too busy, not too tired, just right. And as you're ready, we'll begin to wiggle those toes, wiggle those fingers, rotate ankles and wrists, reach the arms up overhead, stretch out long through the body, coming off any supports you have underneath you. And then we'll bend one knee and then the other. Keep those arms extended as you shift your hips to one side, roll to the other side. Find your head resting to your bottom arm and maybe reach across the body with the top arm, giving yourself a little hug. Using your breath, keeping your eyes closed as long as feels good to you, press yourself back up to a tall seat. Extend those arm, legs, bind your dandasana. Staff posture, sitting up straight and tall, legs extended, point, toes, excuse me, shavasana, toes pointing up to the sky. Let's find that tall spine again, using your fingertips to help support you. And then as you inhale, we'll reach the arms up alongside the ears, bring the palms together. And exhale, drawing your hands right down to meet your heart. If you like, you can bow your chin gently towards your chest. May you have peace in your thoughts, peace in your words, and peace in your heart. Namaste.